Well, let me tell you something strange that I've noticed. You see, the future authoring program, when analyzed, has shown to have a differential impact on men. And not just any men, but those who are considered excluded, non-Westerners, minority men, and those who haven't been doing well. At Mohawk College, for example, this program had a particularly strong effect on male students who hadn't done well in high school and hadn't chosen a major with a clear career path. These men, who may have had an ambiguous relationship with education and lacked motivation, saw positive outcomes from the future authoring program. Now, you might wonder why it had a differential effect on men. Well, part of it could be that women are already doing better, so the program helped those who were struggling. But I don't think that's the whole story. One possible explanation is that women are more agreeable, meaning they are more likely to go along with a structured pathway to success. Men, especially those who are disagreeable, may be less willing to conform to such a structure. They'd rather play video games or do their own thing than follow someone else's rules. But here's the interesting part. When we give these men the opportunity to figure out what they truly want and what goals they want to pursue, they actually become motivated. They see that there's something worth putting effort into, and that's when they start making progress. Now, here's another strange thing I've noticed. More than 90% of the people who watch my YouTube videos are men. You'd think that since the majority of psychology students are women, the viewership would reflect that. But it doesn't. Even before I made any political videos, the majority of my viewers were men. And this trend continues in live appearances as well, where 80 to 90% of the audience is male. This got me thinking, why is that? What is it about the topics I discuss that draws in men? I've realized that a big part of it is the focus on responsibility. In today's society, we often talk about rights without addressing the corresponding responsibilities. But you can't have one without the other. Your rights are someone else's responsibility, and vice versa. Men, in particular, seem to resonate with this idea. They want to take on responsibility and make a meaningful contribution. They're hungry for it. Conservatives often struggle to connect with young people because they don't have something tangible to offer. But responsibility is something that young men desperately need. It gives life meaning and purpose. Just like Homer in the first episode of The Simpsons, men find fulfillment in shouldering the responsibilities for their family and community. It's what makes them honorable. And when I talk about responsibility, I see it in the eyes of the men in the audience. They light up because they recognize the truth in what I'm saying. They've been searching for something to give their lives meaning, and responsibility is the answer. It's like a weight they're eager to carry because they know that's where true fulfillment lies. But here's the problem. Many men today are not given the opportunity to choose their own load of responsibility. They're told what to do and how to live their lives. And when they have no say in the matter, they lose motivation and are prone to depression and self-destructive behaviors. This is why we're seeing an opioid epidemic among unemployed middle-aged white men in the U.S. Without a sense of purpose and responsibility, they fall apart. So, what can men do? They can start by taking the future authoring program and reflecting on what truly matters to them. They can write down their highest values and create goals that align with those values. It's about choosing a load of responsibility that is worth carrying. And for those watching this video, I encourage you to ask yourself, what load of responsibility will you choose? How will you make a meaningful contribution to your own life and the lives of others? Because when you take on responsibility and find your purpose, that's when life becomes worth living. Now, I know this might sound like a lot, but trust me, it's worth it. The rewards of living a responsible and purpose-driven life are immense. So, if you want to achieve those rewards, if you want to become the best version of yourself, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell. By doing so, you're not only showing your commitment to your own personal growth, but you're also joining a community of like-minded individuals who are on the same journey. In conclusion, responsibility is the key to a fulfilling life. It's what separates the men from the boys. So, take that first step, 
choose your load of responsibility and start living a life of purpose. And if you found this video valuable, consider giving a tip proportionate to the value you received. The link can be found in the description. Now go out there and become the best version of yourself. Music, Max Sterling here, and today we're diving deep into the fascinating world of sleep. Did you know that our modern lifestyle is depriving us of the darkness we need for a hormone called melatonin to kick in and provide us with quality sleep? It's true. With artificial light keeping us awake, our brains are tricked into thinking it's still daytime. But fear not, my friends. I have some mind-blowing insights for you today that will revolutionize the way you think about sleep. First, let's talk about temperature. In order to initiate sleep, our bodies need to drop their core temperature by about 1 degree Celsius or 2 to 3 degrees Fahrenheit. This drop in temperature acts as a natural cue for our bodies to fall asleep. But in our modern world, where we have control over ambient temperature, this natural cue is disrupted. Hot showers or baths can actually help with this. You see, when you take a hot bath, the blood rushes to the surface of your skin, away from the core of your body, which causes your core temperature to drop after you get out. So next time you're struggling to fall asleep, try taking a hot bath before bed. Next, let's address alcohol. Many of us turn to alcohol as a sleep aid, but it's actually one of the most misunderstood and detrimental substances when it comes to sleep. Sure, it may sedate you, but sedation is not the same as quality sleep. Alcohol fragments your sleep, causing you to wake up multiple times throughout the night without even realizing it. It also blocks your dream sleep, which is essential for emotional and mental health. So, as tempting as that nightcap may be, it's best to avoid alcohol if you want a good night's sleep. Now, let's talk about the stigmatization of sleep in our society. We often label those who prioritize sleep as lazy, when in reality, sufficient sleep is essential for our overall well-being. Just think about how we treat babies. We know that they need their sleep, so why do we abandon this notion as we grow older? It's time to change the narrative and celebrate sleep as the vital function it is. But here's the thing, getting enough sleep is not just about feeling well rested. It's about extending our health span and living a longer, healthier life. Studies have shown that shorter sleep duration is linked to increased mortality rates and a lower quality of life. So, let's start thinking of sleep as an insurance policy for our health, a tool that can prevent a multitude of ailments and improve our overall well-being. In fact, the correlation between lack of sleep and various health conditions is striking. From heart disease to Alzheimer's, diabetes to mental health disorders, insufficient sleep plays a significant role. Just like with smoking, the data is there, and we need to prioritize sleep as a fundamental aspect of our health. So, my friends, let's make a change. Let's embrace sleep as the Swiss army knife of health, the ultimate tool for prevention and well-being. And remember, we're in a time where we have the knowledge and the science to understand the importance of sleep, just like we did with smoking 50 years ago. It's time to prioritize sleep and give ourselves the gift of a longer, healthier life. Now, before I go, I want to ask you a question. What steps are you going to take from this video to prioritize your sleep and improve your health? I want to hear your action plan in the comments below. And if you found this video valuable and it has made a positive impact on your life, consider showing your support by giving a tip proportional to the value you receive. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and remember, sleep is your secret weapon for success. Catch you in the next video. Music.